Um, I'm really excited to be here and to, we're going to be talking all about scorecards and how you can leverage them in your business. So a little bit of a sneak peek ahead. I'm going to get some We will make sure everyone knows what I am talking about when I say scorecard. And then I am going to explore or go into my journey uh, using scorecards and what I think it went from kind of easy to where we're trying to get to at the moment where it is hard. Um, but first, as always, there is the mandatory introduction to me. And I'm Niall, uh, Niall Marr. So I usually put that in there so people can remember because anybody outside of Ireland struggles with my name. So I usually just tell them it's like the River Nile. I've been uh, a lead developer, software architect, head of product, CTO, and currently I am leading inner source for Marsh McLennan, which I'll talk about in a second. I've also founded a company called Kodu, which is one of the biggest well, it is the biggest coding community here in Ireland at the moment and is starting to grow globally. So I'm really excited about that. And we're also building curriculums to help people to learn to code for free there as well. So if you want another coding community to join or another community, if you're a coder and like building stuff like myself, please jump on in. I'm I'd be really happy to have you as part of the community. And if you don't mind, I always like making you friends on LinkedIn and all, please connect with me on LinkedIn. And um, if you have any questions afterwards or anything at all, feel free to reach out. I love helping people with these things. I'm also in the Slack for the Inner Source Commons as well. So you can just find me there if you don't like social media or any of those things. So a little bit about Marsh McLennan, just to set the stage of how complicated uh, this job had, had gotten. Um, Marsh McLennan operates in insurance. I had to actually make a list of this. This just shows you. It operates in insurance, risk management, reinsurance, talent management, investment advisory, management consulting, and a load of other services. And it's four flagship companies are Marsh, Mercer, Guy Carpenter, and Oliver Wyman. But they own hundreds, if not over a thousand companies. So it's an interesting inner source project because the businesses until very recently had operated very independently and there was nearly no overlapping or sharing between the businesses. So it was my job when I came into Marsh McLennan to start the inner source initiative and prove to the businesses it was working. So two interesting challenges, get people talking and get people working together, and then also prove that this stuff is working. So for both my job security and to help businesses understand how we are doing, metrics kind of become essential uh, when it comes to showing us what's working and probably more importantly, what's not working as well. This is where my lovely scorecards come in. And scorecards are just as the name suggests, they are a way to keep score and track certain metrics that might be important to us. And scorecards are kind of my jam in general. And that's because I use them for pretty much anything I have to make decisions with, at least serious decisions with. I don't go shopping with a scorecard, um, but things like hiring, and anything that could have some impact to business, I always like to have a clear scorecard around it. And that's because if I leave things up to my gut feelings, or if I leave things to how I think things are going on the day, I usually get inconsistent results. So scorecards help me keep consistent results. So let's talk about scorecards for inner source. And if you wanna keep track of your progress and can you continue to get funding, from, and buy in from all of your leadership, as you continue to push them and ask them and annoy them for change, you're going to need to show them physical results. And you'll also want to be able to see what people have been changing and start comparing to see what teams are being successful, unsuccessful, and see what results you're kind of getting. 
So your scorecards are going to be your KPIs and your metrics and your weighting system that will help you measure and guide people um, into the inner source journey as well. Um, and this is where scale comes in uh, or where I found it very helpful for scaling. And that's because when you have clear benchmarks and points on certain tasks and systems that you want implemented or trying to get people to figure out what good looks like, this is a great way to get people uh, involved and have them try to improve things without having to hold their hand the whole way. So if you've ever felt like a bottleneck when you're trying to teach people what good feels like, having some very clear scorecards can make this very easy. And I did want to touch off on some key metrics that I care about. And it's just because anytime I talk about this topic and scorecards and measuring things, one of the very first things I get asked always is, what should we measure? And I've seen a lot of people and a few people even bring it up in the summit so far, one of the big things being things like activity scores. And I love project health indicators. That's really, really uh, something I love to see is like how good a repository is or how easy it is to get started. And so I am a big advocate for indicators on documentation and making sure those kind of things are working. And another one I tend to look at is to see how quickly people responding to outside collaborators as well. And none of this has to be set in stone and you can always add and remove metrics as you go on in the journey. And that's exactly how we're doing it and how we're hoping to continue doing it uh, as we roll this out. So we're trying to start simple and then we will try to move on from there uh, to more difficult options as well. So let's start on where I started, because I think this is the easiest implementation of a scorecard. And I did this in a couple of hours and it really is the lowest barrier of entry. And all I started focus on, focusing on initially was documentation because most of our applications had zero documentation and because there was no documentation, it made it nearly impossible for people to work with. So how we did this was, and I'm going to show you my actual scorecard, is we created a very simple markdown scorecard with very clear points to show you how you're scoring against things and what is going on and what you should be focusing on to push your project forward. Now, I'm just going to zoom in so you can have a little look closer at some of the things that are important to me. We use GitHub, so certain things are GitHub specific, like topics and descriptions. Other things, not GitHub specific, so maybe they're things you might steal as well. I know they're very standard in the inner source commons, a lot of these templates and things. And contributions and PR templates, issue templates, all little stuff that I like to have in place just to make sure that it's as easy to work with as possible. And I don't think there's any controversy, controversy in this slide at all for what we should be tracking. Again, very simple, nothing blowing people away here. Nobody's ever given out to me and said, that's too difficult or I can't do it. And that's what makes this a really nice thing to get people started with. I've even started giving people awards uh, for getting perfect scores on this as well. So that, that's a, a fun little treat that people have been pushing towards as well. Now, for the medium difficulty bit. And this is more about how lazy I am. Um, I don't want to have to check everything uh, all the time. So I just create things to give feedback for me. Um, and what do I mean by automating feedback? So if you had to go in and check those scorecards against everything, uh, it might get very tedious. And I know it was for me. So that's where automations come in. And I based mine on the open source, inner source ready report. Uh, this is actually one from GitHub as well, very useful. And what this does is 
it gives us a little bot which lets us look to see how good our repositories are. So anytime a pull request is opened and improves or removes some of the standards, we can uh, get some helpful tips straight away. You can see here, we get a health status, and this is just uh, some of the stuff directly from that open source library as well. And then when you have all of these scorecards and metrics, and you have all of that, the most difficult part is demoing the results and showing that this stuff is working. And this is a work in progress for me, and I don't have any demo of the, what this might look like, but what we're looking to build is a service that will collect and show all of the information from the different things we care about. And it's much more than just the tools in a repository. This is me product management nerding out and trying to see how we can find some metrics that will help us know that we're going in the right direction as well. And rather than um, having to do this again, I'm always looking for systems that I can build around me that will make life easy for me as well. And because it's so important to show your work to non-technical stakeholders as well as technical stakeholders, we're trying to build sexy looking da dashboards and graphs that make it easy for people to just go and look at it and find the information that they're looking for. With, and they can be in charge of just looking and seeing what's happening um, very clearly as well. And once you have this place, I think it's going to be much easier to add metrics and have a much easier way to gauge what things are going on rather than pulling data from different systems and manually comparing them against our scorecards all the time. And I think most importantly, if you're a coder like me, you'll just spend hours and hours trying to automate things anyway, rather than uh, doing opening up an Excel sheet. So this is what we call a programmer move. And just to finish off, I want to show you some of the challenges that I've hit while going into the scorecards. And it's definitely not something I'll get something to talk about or time to talk about in this talk, but I wanted to show some of the challenges that we've been facing with all of this rollout. Some of the challenges, like making sure the me metrics are relevant is always difficult. The data collection and integration, that's what I was just talking about. That is difficult as well. I don't know why I'm, I'm just going to say difficult, difficult. Everything is difficult in this list. It's all um, going to come at you at some point. But with a big company and a transformation like this, you've got to start eating the elephant somewhere and you can take these things one at a time. So you don't have to solve all these problems at once. We certainly haven't, and we're definitely picking up momentum, but I think it's worth knowing that these are issues that we're working through and absolutely will be happy to share some learnings as we get through it as well. And now if there's any questions, I'm more than happy to try and answer them as well.